Hello there. So you've been on QRZ.com and you've had a look at that uh, funny looking chart thing. It has SN on it. It has SFI, A and K. What does it mean? Let's find out. Welcome back. It's Tim, G5TM. And uh, if you're new around here, then... Thanks for stopping by and think about clicking that subscribe button and the, the bell button for any future notifications. And if you've been here before, then it's good to see you. So when people are looking to check on the uh, likely propagation on HF, whether the conditions are good or not, or whether it's worth turning our radio on, then often they go on to uh, sites such as QRZ or anywhere else, in fact, that stores the information and uh, look up certain numbers. Now, the first one we're going to look at is called the SFI which is known as the Solar Flux Index. Now what the Solar Flux Index is, is basically a, a, a measure of the amount of microwave energy emitted by the sun. So at number 63 basically means you have a very quiet, uh, activity-free sun, which means that it's probably the lowest number, in fact, you can have. I think it's 63.75, actually, um, which means that effectively you have a very spot-free, quiet sun uh, with very little uh, in terms of potential long-range propagation. There will be some, but uh, conditions will be pretty flat. So when the uh, SFI, the Solar Flux Index, uh, reaches 70 or more, then single hop contacts off the, off the ionosphere there tend to become a lot more uh, prevalent, a lot more possible on bands such as 20 metres. So multi-hop propagation is a lot more possible uh, between 80 and 20 meters, we have you know the multi hops up and down off the ionosphere, which gives us much longer distances potentially. Once the SFI goes up to about 120, that is, then we begin to see uh, the possibilities for DX beginning to really widen. And when the, the flux uh, measure goes up to around 170, 180, uh, that's when, sta uh, when bands such as 15 and 10 and 12 really start to open up as well. Now, as it stands at the moment, uh, current, our current sort of trough, if you like, in terms of propagation that we're in with the, uh, the sunspot cycle, then the SFI tends to be hovering around between sort of 68 and 72, uh, usually around 69, 70. So uh, we're not in a great place at the moment. Now, the other number you've got there, or one of the other numbers, is the SN, which is the sunspot number, which is actually, I believe, the, uh, the wolf number, as it's called. Now, they've been measured since going way back into the 19th century, which is why uh, scientists and uh, people who watch this sort of thing are able to sort of get a fairly accurate gauge, or they think is an accurate gauge, in terms of the likely uh, prediction for the next uh, sunspot cycle and the next sunspot maxima. Every sort of 11 years is the rough guesstimate for it, but that, that, was, that isn't exactly 11 years, it was an anniversary for it, but that gives us an, an, an idea of how often they happen. So like a, a, the largest annual average number for the whole year, so the average for the whole year was somewhere back in the 50s, I think it was like 190 sunspots per day, so uh, it only knows what sort of year that was for DX. Uh, wet string probably will get you around the world in all sorts of conditions. And what you find is that um, as the SFI increases, so will the sunspots. There's a, a fairly reasonable correlation between the two as they go up and down. So once you see those sunspot numbers rise, then you can begin to also see the SFI rise too. And uh, those are two very, very useful gauges in terms of the uh, potential propagation uh, on the HF band. Should add as well, of course, that the reason that is is because higher sunspot numbers uh, equate to greater solar activity. So the K index, first of all, or the K index, uh, which is another another number on there, is a uh, measure of uh, geomagnetic activity. And what we want that number to be is as low as possible, because when we have a geomagnetic storm, for example, that often makes it very difficult indeed to make uh, really good DX contacts on HF. And in fact, it can literally, uh, in severe cases, just completely wipe out the HF bands. So we want that to be quite a low number. Now, uh, the numbers range from naught, which is inactive, uh, up to nine, which is extremely uh, severe storm. So effectively, we want a K index number, which is less than five. And I'll just look at my little list here. Five means minor storm. So at five, uh, that's okay. Once we get it down to three or less, 
then you tend to find a band such as 80 and 40, which are more susceptible to static crashing and noise and everything else, become a little less noisy and a little easier for us to hear those distant stations. And of course, for them to hear us. Now, the A index is linked to the K index. Now, the K index, what we've just looked at, is actually worked out every three hours, so that's eight times a day. It ranges from naught, which is quiet, up to 400, which is severe storm. And effectively, what we want is for the A index figure to be around 15 or less for us to have some decent propagation on HF. So there you are. I'm not going into it in any great depth. I just wanted to give a flavour as to what those different numbers mean. Um, just to give you an, an at-a-glance guide, in case you were wondering, you've never been told about it before, you're just wondering what on earth that means. Especially if you're new to HF or whatever, and you've gone into QRZ and you think, well, QRZ.com, and you think, well, what on earth do those mean? So, it gives you an idea anyway. Um, stick with the hobby, because in about five or six years' time, hopefully, uh, uh, the memory of having an SFI of 70 and no sunspots uh, will hopefully be a dim and distant one when we approach, uh, hopefully, somewhere towards the peak of the next uh, sunspot cycle. And those, those will be fun, exciting times, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope it helps a little bit anyway. And uh, as I said earlier, if you want to, think about clicking that subscribe button. It'd be great to have you on board. This is Tim, G5TM, wishing you good luck uh, with your DXing too. All the best now. Bye-bye.